Welcome from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on this fourth Sunday after Epiphany. I'm Pastor Chris Nepton, and I am so glad that you are joining us for worship today. Uh, we hope that you have been uh, you have been blessed by what we are sharing here uh, in the weeks past, and that you will continue to watch as well in the weeks to come. As you can always do on our YouTube channel, HTLC Video. Certainly, right now as we are pausing from worshiping in person. Uh, we hope that you are watching and that you are inviting others to watch as well. And when the time uh, comes that we would be able to gather here once again in the sanctuary. You can always follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Please do like, share, and subscribe. And you can always uh, find out more about what we do here and who we are at our website, myhtlc.org. Thank you once again for joining us, and we begin this morning with our order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. 
I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy. For you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. The Gospel reading for this fourth Sunday after Epiphany is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through them, the midst of them, and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Perhaps you noticed as I read the gospel this week that the first verse that we read is the last verse that we read at the end of last week's gospel last week. 
So this week is a continuation of what we heard last week as Jesus went to the synagogue at Nazareth and got up to read and read from the place in Isaiah where it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I have come to bring good news to the poor, and so on and so forth. Jesus has come to bring good news to the poor. He has come to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, and also to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Up to that point, it's good news. It's good news for the crowd gathered at the synagogue in Nazareth. It says that they were amazed at what they had heard and all spoke well of him. And then, well, Jesus, Jesus changes things. He pokes the bear, if you will. He explains a little bit more to them. And he uses this proverb, which is a bit confusing. He says, Surely you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself first. Not exactly sure what that means. It could mean a couple of things. Perhaps you have some ideas as what it means in the context of this. But I want to share a saying that we have in our family, or that I grew up with anyway. It was like this, and it goes like this. Sweep in front of your own doorstep first. Maybe you're familiar with that one, but it used to be used in our family all the time when we were a bit full of ourselves and telling someone else that they ought to do this or they ought to do that or they should act in this way and feeling a little bit of contempt. Well, they would say, you should sweep in front of your own doorstep first. Meaning this, meaning... Why don't you take care of your problems instead of telling me what my problems are? So how does that fit into this? this, How does that relate to this proverb that Jesus quotes, Doctor, cure your own self first. I mean, certainly after the people were amazed and speaking well of the gracious words that he had just shared. Good news, right? Well, maybe, maybe it really wasn't received as good news. I mean, the next question that the crowd asks in Nazareth at the synagogue says, isn't this Joseph's son? Which could mean, hey, this is one of our own. These things that he's talking about, it's certainly going to happen here. Or it could mean this. We've heard this message before. People have come into this synagogue and proclaimed good news, Jesus. If it's such good news that you're bringing to us, why are you in the situation that you're in? Or why don't you sweep in front of your own doorstep first? Because certainly Jesus was part of that crowd. He knew them. He knew the hard life that they lived. He lived the same life with them. And they're looking around and they're not seeing good news anywhere. But yet Jesus is saying to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled. Ha! Really, it's been fulfilled. Nothing looks different, Jesus. This good news that Jesus is sharing to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It has come in their midst, yet they don't understand. They don't yet understand who he is, 
or to whom he belongs. That is the Son of God, the Messiah, the one come to save them. They had been waiting so long. How could it be that this one who was amongst us is the one that comes to save us? And if he is come to save us, well, perhaps he will do for us. Not exactly sure. Not exactly sure where Jesus was going with that or what the crowd was feeling. Indignant because he was one of their own or greedy because they wanted more for themselves to lift themselves up. But either way, they were missing the possibilities and the promises which God has proclaimed to God's people. And we too miss those as well. Knowing those promises, hearing those promises, and yet going out after church each week and living as we always have lived working on our own to make ourselves better. Not taking time to appreciate what God has given with gratitude, with gratitude in our hearts, that we would be thankful for the gifts we have had and expectant for the ones yet to come. And when we miss this good news, it's not that it has failed. It's not that it has failed at all, but it is bigger than we are and will expand beyond us that others might understand and that it will continue to be proclaimed until perhaps we too understand. You see, this good news, it includes us, yes. But it also is large enough to go to others that they too will know that God is a God of love here to save them as well that they are created in God's image, that they are beloved children of God. You see, Jesus expands this by telling them stories of their faith. Stories of the prophet Elijah, where during that famine where it didn't rain for three years and six months, there were plenty of widows in Israel. Yet where did God send Elijah? He sent him to the widow at Zarephath in Sidon, and she benefited from God's servant and God's good news and God's promise. And then he goes on to say that this good news, which has always been amongst God's people, in the day of Elisha, were there not plenty of lepers in Israel, yet only Naaman, the Syrian, your oppressor, was cured. It went beyond the people because the good news, the promises of God were bigger than just God's people, but extend to all of creation and those in the synagogue obviously misunderstood that what Jesus was saying was not a message of exclusion of them, but a message of inclusion for all. And in their anger and in their rage, they drive him out of the synagogue to the brow of the hill on which their town was built in order to throw him off. You see, in the beginning of our, in the beginning of our service today, in our confession and forgiveness. It explains that we get angry when we don't we don't recognize God's glory as we would expect it. And that we hurt others. We exclude others. This is an example of that. This is where even we can reject God for what God is doing and God is promising. 
It seems that the people would try to stop Jesus, end it all by throwing him over the cliff, but it says this, but Jesus passed through the midst of him and went on his way. Jesus would not be stopped. This good news, this message of hope, this message for the poor, the oppressed, the blind, the captives, it will not end. It will not be stopped. We cannot get in its way. Try as we might, but this good news is for all of creation, that all of creation would be redeemed and made whole in Christ Jesus. That God's creation would be as it was in the beginning and is now, yet we fail to recognize that what God has created by speech and said it is good is in fact good. It's not always easy to hear the good news that Jesus proclaims, that is proclaimed in our midst. Because we don't always recognize that good news comes from a place of love for all of God's people. And though we don't understand it, it doesn't make it any less so for them and for us. Last week in the reading from Corinthians, it says, if one part of the body suffers, then all suffer. If one is exalted, then all will rejoice. Look, when one part of creation is lifted up, all of creation is lifted up with it. When one of our brothers or sisters or siblings is blessed by God, is lifted up, is given food, it doesn't mean that there is not enough for us, but there is enough for all, including them. And when they are made whole, we too benefit from that. Jesus comes for all, and that's not always easy for us to hear as we make our claims about God using theology and words and claims and preaching. As humans, we tend to understand things in dualisms, good, bad, black, white. But there's a whole lot of gray in between. It's not easy to hear, but I think the best that we can do is to open our hearts and take time to consider, to consider why are we feeling excluded? Why are we feeling threatened when someone else is blessed, is benefiting? is being made whole. We would do well to take time to consider and to reflect on our motives. What are my motives when feeling jealous? What are my convictions? What do I know that is true about God? Are they lining up with those promises and those things that I have heard and that I proclaim? Or am I understanding God in terms that are too small? What are my ways of life? How am I living? Am I living in ways that reflect what I proclaim? Do the ways that I live and the ways that I think and the things that I say, do they take all of God's creation into account? Or do they leave some out? Do they leave any out? We are but part of God's creation, and yet we are part of the whole which God loves and God cares for. 
And God works to reunite us as part of it. In order to understand who God is, we must work at our understanding and how we compare. How we compare and how our understanding compares to what God is saying. As hard as it may be, I pray we have the faith and the trust and the hope and the graciousness to understand that God's love and good news is big enough for all. Yes, us who are privileged and have resources. And yes, the poor, the oppressed, the lame, and the captives. Each and every person, each and every part of creation, God's love and good news will not be stopped because God's word has come among us and is passing through our midst. And so, as Jesus is passing through our midst and going on his way, May we also recognize that good news for us and for all, today and forever. Amen. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot The Spirit of the Lord is poured out in abundance upon us. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let us pray. O Lord, guide your church in the ways of faith, hope, and love. Cultivate ministries and communities of compassion that bear witness to your enduring presence among us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Teach us to live in humility on the earth, curb arrogance that leads to the destruction of natural resources, and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are the refuge of all who seek hope and freedom. Accompany immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers who cross borders to find safety and opportunity. Embolden leaders to draft compassionate policies on behalf of migrants and those who assist them. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Comfort with your love all who are lonely, fearful, or brokenhearted. Sustain the hope of all those who suffer in body or spirit, especially Jim DeBoer, Dolly DeLusk, Lou Halfpap, Jean Hoggard, Annie Lynch, Sue Morency, Henrietta Mueller, Joe Nepsa, Carl Rose, John Sanderson, Ellen Sturm, Deborah Terzakis, Nancy Meyer, the family of Josette de Bruyne on the, her passing and as she enters into eternity with you. We pray for all those suffering from COVID-19 and others not mentioned here. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your grace falls upon young and old alike. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insight, and their curiosity. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your premises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We are ever grateful for God's generosity and abundance poured out in our lives. We thank God that Jesus comes to bring good news to the poor, to bring release for those who are in bondage and held back, that the oppressed would go free, and that the year of the Lord's favor would be proclaimed, that all would know God's love. Thank you so much for continuing to join us in this project of ministry where we are called by God, where God pours out God's love and we are made aware of it because of God's word that we might share it with all the world. It's because of your contributions that we are able to do so, not only here at Holy Trinity, but also by partnering with other ministries in our community, in the region, and throughout the world. Thank you for sending in your offerings to the church uh, through the mail, your bank's online bill pay function, Simply Giving, and also our website, myhtlc.org forward slash online dash giving. Because of you, as I have said, we are able to experience and to share God's love, and so we give thanks to God. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. I would encourage you to gather any bread or wine at this time so that you might take part in a Holy Communion as we celebrate it here. Also, if you uh, have uh, any of these small prepackaged uh, element cups, I would encourage you to peel back that top layer to make the wafer available and also so it'll be easier to access the juice uh, when the time comes. We uh, want you to know that if you need these and would like them, please just call the church office or send an email to the church and we will make sure that you get them. We certainly want everyone to know that they are welcome at this table, that God's gift of love, grace, and forgiveness is for you and for all who would desire it. And so the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave the cup for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered as one into the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today for this time of worship. We do hope that you recognize Jesus moving in your midst and going on his way, and that you would follow in that way as well with joy and thanksgiving. Until we are able to gather again, whether it's here in the sanctuary or again on YouTube next week, uh, as we worship together, we ask that you would be well, that you would stay safe and receive this blessing. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in now and forever. Amen. into a weary world share the good news thanks be to God <laughs>